Alright, let's get started with a little song. Don't you want to go? Sunday service that you can pass out to people in need that you might know. So, we're very excited. 
More details to come. Okay. Um, what we're going to go ahead and do here is take up a benevolent offering for our hurricane relief. Okay, so uh, we've got our ushers here. I'm going to go ahead and say a prayer, and uh, we're going to go ahead and pass the baskets. Just take up an additional collection, anything that's on your heart, anything you're able to, that's going to go toward hurricane relief efforts. So let's go ahead and pray for uh, our offering as well as the rest of our time tonight. God, thank you so much for bringing us together, and God, uh, just pray for us as a church right now, God, that uh, anything that we have that we can offer, God, what you put on our hearts, I pray that we can just continue to be a generous church, uh, God, and I pray that you would take this offering and use it to really help others that are in need, God. There, there are so many needs around the country we want to help, uh, around the world, we want to help in any way that we can, and I know that this is just a small, small piece, but we know that you can take small things and, uh, and make great things. So pray that uh, you'd really be with the victims and be with uh, with everyone that's just, I, I can't imagine the fear and the stress and just everything that has taken place and is going to have to take place to get back to any sort of normal. I just pray that you would be at peace and comfort those in need, God. We love you. And uh, Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And uh, we're going to continue with tonight, but those baskets will be passing. So uh, whatever's on your heart, please, please give generously. Um, okay. Go ahead and turn over to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10. This is the passage that uh, we read last week. Yes. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, hope. Hope worldwide. Hope worldwide. Thank you. Hope. Thank you, Michael. You could probably, and you could probably put the memo like hurricane. Okay. But yeah, in the memo, hope worldwide. In the memo, put uh, hurricane relief. Or benevolent. Okay, Hebrews chapter 10. Hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promises faithful. Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together, or some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Um, you know, th tonight we're going to do something a little bit different. It's one of my favorite things to do, okay? We've, we've done this in the past with leadership groups, with staff, with the campus ministry, with Bible talks. And, uh, you know, I think life is obviously has a way of exhausting us and uh, stressing us out or discouraging us. And sometimes it's good just to be together and encourage one another. And so uh, tonight we're going to do two of my favorite things. We're going to hear some testimonies right. and we're going to have time to come up and just encourage one another. So kind of how this is what's going to work. We have three people that I've asked to share their whys with us. Okay, and so we're going to start off, we're going to have Lafonso, uh, he's going to come up and he's going to share his why, and then after we hear a testimony, we're going to have about five, six minutes of open mic encouragement time. This is a time where anybody can come up and encourage or share something to encourage someone specifically here in the room, or not in the room, but this is just a time to really build each other up, okay, so uh, we can all leave feeling unified, but also refreshed. To, to finish out the week strong, amen? Uh, and then after we have some time of sharing, Carrie Hutchison's gonna come up, she's gonna share her why, okay? And then we'll have some more time of encouragement, okay? And then to close us out, Jake Wassinger's gonna come up and share his why. Okay, so I'm really excited for tonight. Um, go ahead and be considering someone in the room that you can really come up and share. We're not gonna have, everyone's not gonna be able to share, okay? So. Uh, I will kind of cut it off, but it's just going to be first come, first serve. So, and uh, just so you know, not everyone's going to get shared about either. All right? Uh, so
so let's focus on sharing about someone else. Sound good? Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Lafonso, and uh, we get to hear his why. Amen? Share my why. Uh, let's see. So I've been a disciple about to be uh, five years, I think, next month. Um, not as much as some of the people in here, obviously, but uh, more than others. Uh, it's been a crazy ride, I guess. Um, so I was met in 2013, I think my second day on campus. Um, and I was just kind of walking around the info fair and just minding my own business. And uh, <laughs> these two guys came up to me, Matt DeCunha and Matt Zayner. Um, they asked me to fill out a survey. And then when I filled it out, they asked me if I wanted to study the Bible. Um, and you know, I was like, yeah, whatever. And so I didn't have anything else to do. So I decided to take them up on it. And it took a little bit. You know, They were texting me, and I kind of ignored them for a few days. but. Um, after I started studying and I, I started to get into the scriptures, I thought I was already a Christian um, at this point. And I realized upon studying the scriptures for myself, instead of you know, like just going to church and having someone read it to me um, and living by someone else's faith, I realized that um, there's a lot more to being a Christian than just showing up to church, um, being the good kid, you know. And so um, also at the time, I was in a relationship I've been in a relationship with this girl for, uh, I think, three years, three, four years at this point. And um, it was a very good relationship by worldly standards, I would say. Um, and uh, our families were pretty tied, and uh, we were obviously very close. And I was pretty sure that this was the woman that I was going to spend the rest of my life with, you know. Um, and so I started studying and reading the scriptures, and it started talking about um, you know, giving up everything to follow Jesus and um, what it means to be a disciple and um, sin, you know, and impurity and stuff like that. And I'm just like, whoa. Um, and so, yeah, some things came up and then I had to make some decisions. And um, because of where our relationship was at and the, the impurity and the lies and deceit and everything, um, it kind of came to a crossroad between, you know, am I going to hold on to this relationship or am I going to let it go and, and follow Jesus? That's what it really came to. Um, and, you know, I bucked and kicked and cried and I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Um, I tried to compromise several times, but at the end of the day, I just had to decide one way or the other. And thankfully I decided to follow Jesus. Amen. Now that was really hard though. Um, that required some hard talks. Um, well, yeah, some stuff. <laughs> but um, I'm so grateful that I did it and uh, my life has changed drastically because of that. I feel like I'm a totally different person from the, from the, the guy that I was in high school uh, in my first year of college. And um, yeah. So my whole, man, there's so many things that I want to say right now, but uh, my why for, for you guys tonight, if I could sum it up, is, you know, why did I do that? Um, I think just reading the scriptures and seeing Jesus' love for us was just way too powerful uh, for me to just ignore. Um, I, at first, was like, you know, I'm not right with God, oh my gosh, I'm not going to go to hell, and... Uh, you know, this is this is terrible, uh, and there was that fear element, and that's that's good um, to some extent, but also the, the love that comes from it is so much more powerful than the fear. And um, once I realized how much I was loved, then that kind of moved me to want to do the same for other people. Uh, and so, in First John um, chapter four, you don't have to turn there, but I'll read it. It says, "Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love." This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us 
accepted his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Um, God loved me first before I even knew what was going on, before I even knew the situation. Uh, Jesus knew that we were going to sin. He knew that we were going to struggle. He knew that maybe we'll walk away at some point. Uh, but he still went to the cross anyway. Mm -hmm. And um, that is super powerful. And I just can't imagine, like, if not just me, but if all of us were to love everyone that we come across like Jesus did, this world would be totally different. Um, so that's that's kind of my why. Like, I why am I still a Christian? Why did I choose to be a Christian in the first place? It's because uh, this love that the scriptures. Um, I want to love other people like Jesus loved me. So. Amen. Amen. Come up and share. Let's lay out some ground rules here, okay? Uh, don't go too long, or I will stand up, and that will be your cue that you've gone too long. Um, it's first come, first serve. So, like I said, uh, we're going to have just a, a few minutes here. After you share, let's just say, well, okay, let's snap. We're gonna, we won't clap, because clapping is too loud, and we have to wait for everyone to be done clapping. So you'll snap instead of clapping, okay? And... Uh, you don't have to, you don't always have to hug the person you share about. You are welcome to, but, uh, you know, you don't have to, okay? So we'll leave that up to you, okay? So um, can I get a volunteer that would like to come up and start us off? Connor, yes. come on up. And then yes. after Connor goes, it's just first come, first serve. Let's go. Um, I actually want to encourage two guys, uh, Jason and Kofi. Uh, these, these guys are just really sold out for God recently. Um, Jason's only been a disciple for three weeks, and every time we get D time, he's just really uh, sharing what he's learning in the scriptures, and it, it just inspires me. Um, and he's trying to apply it to his life, and it's very encouraging to see that. And then Kofi with the Bible talk last night. Um, just really cool seeing him step up in his leadership and uh, trying to train people and really digging through the scriptures. Um, these guys are really using the Bible in their lives, and it's awesome mm -hmm. to see, even though they're so young. Yeah, I just love them a lot, so good job, guys. Hey, right. I'm too short for this, and I'm loud enough, I don't like it. Um, so I'm also going to share about a group of people, and that's my roommates, um, Savannah, Haley, and Amelia. Um, we have lived together only two months, but they're people that I've grown super, super close to, and we've gone through some rough times the last two months, and... We've just been there for each other and just been getting so, so close. And they're such godly women. And I'm so happy to be their roommates. And I'm proud to say they're some of my best friends. And I love you guys. seen the amount of grace that she literally has. Um, I am really bad about showing up to work on time sometimes. Oh. And, <laughs> and she's just so gracious about it. She's like, Jordan, can you just show up? She's like, okay, can you try to be here at this time, next time? Um, she is literally like another mom to me. Um, she will like sit there with me whenever I freak out about the extension cord not being long enough to back in the room. <laughs> <laughs> and she also like will just straight up call me out when I need it. Like the other day, I was talking to her, and she's like, "You just gotta stop being a coward. Man. <laughs> you gotta just do it." And I remember last year I was having some struggles with my roommates, and I was the only disciple in my house. And she was like, "Girl, you gotta be a light." Um, and she's also raised really great women, um, Ursa and Courtney and Shante and Lauren, yeah. have really helped me out a lot. Um, and I love you guys so much. And I'm so um, I just wanted to shout out a couple ladies, Gwen uh, and Lori. Um, we have these ministry campus events sometimes when we do athletics. Um, and it's kind of ended a couple of times with both of these ladies. Um, 
become a concussed because of something I did. Um, you guys are both troopers and kind of know what Lee Ponza said. Just so loving and forgiving. So, I got my heart. Thank you. I'll do my best next time. That was just sorry. I think we have some of the best men in this church, and I'm really grateful for how they stand firm on God's word. And so I, the two that I really want to hold up are Willie and James. And I just really appreciate how much they've stepped up and it just stand so firm on God's word. They call us to really be the, the righteous people that we should be. So I just want to say thank you. Um, I know that James has stepped in and uh, been the board, acting as the board president, and I'm really grateful uh, for the integrity and also the outside input that he's been getting get, uh, getting from other people. And I think it just builds my confidence in the leadership that we have. So I just want to say thank you very much to both of you. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Um, I just want to raise up Ariana real quick. Um, I just... Uh, just getting to spend a lot of time with her and getting really close with her this semester and just how um, quick she is to be open and vulnerable about and like really real about all of the areas in her life that um, are challenging and are really hard. And um, I just wanna share the scripture that reminds me of her, uh, Proverbs 4, chapter, or er, verse 18, the path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full light of day. And for any of you who have like met Ariana and spent time with her, she is a light. Like she, like you know when she walks into the room, and she is just like you just have this warmth whenever she greets you, and she, it's just so welcoming. And so, uh, I love you, Ariana, and I just wanted to lift you up. <laughs> All right, the person I'm going to share about, or the people I'm going to share about, you're not here, but I told Jackson to record it, so. <laughs> um, so I'm going to share about the Ellis's. Um, so the campus guys, last um, semester, they shared their story with us, and you guys know a little bit about what they went through. But then they just moved from um, um, Wichita and then came to Lawrence, back to Lawrence. But the circumstances that they came here, and all that they came here and then they kept on doing for the church and for the young professional group was really like a very encouraging because we were going through a lot and going through a lot of transition at that time with the young professional group. But they came in, they stepped up and they took up the leadership of the young professional and they just, they, they just kept on pouring out, pouring out, pouring out. Even when they had nothing in their tank, they just kept on pouring out to us. And to me, that was really encouraging and that's kind of, that's, I just want to shout out them and say thank you. I would like to actually lift up two couples um, in the ministry, so the Zigglers and the Carters. Um, you guys are absolutely amazing for all you do for Kids Kingdom. Um, those of you who have done Kids Kingdom know how amazing it is, but you also know the challenges that come with it. And um, they are there um, every Sunday, um, providing snack, doing um, uh, the crafts for the kids, uh, providing the teachers with whatever they need. They're always there for us, and they always lead some amazing lessons to continue to charge us in the right direction. So thank you guys, and you guys are really loved, and we uh, appreciate everything you do. <laughs> All right, I was driving into work yesterday, and I was listening to the message from Sunday, and I was listening to song after song after song, thinking, I need to record that song after every single, I think it was five songs. And each one, I was like, I need to record that song, I need to record it. And I wanted to find a way to get it off of YouTube, and I know Josh can help me with that. Um, but it just made me think about the fact that our worship ministry, led yes. by James, James again, um, has grown. And I was just, um, it's been so inspiring just to hear the growth in that ministry. And then in particular, uh, Joe Nagel uh, had led a song, and his leadership of songs, I've noticed over the years, have gotten, has gotten better and better. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate 
it's obvious that he's been working on that. So I really appreciate that. So I want to lift up Joe Nagel, James, and the whole worship and song yeah. <laughs> Uh, real quick, I just want to lift up Roberto. Um, I have had the pleasure of living with him for a year, and he's a completely different person now. And it has been awesome to see him go back through the studies um, and just finding new ways to serve the church and uh, new people to hang out with. It, uh, it's just been really awesome to see him transform. So I just want to lift him up. Okay, um, I'm going to call up Miss Carrie Hutchison. Come on up here, we can hear her why. You don't want some more sharing after that? to be up here, and I appreciate the opportunity. Um, I grew up happily and with a very loving family, but I was a very insecure person, and um, that's just my personality, consumed to the point that when I got older about what people thought of me. At the same time, I had a longing for God that grew stronger with time, and I did not know where to go to seek a deeper relationship with God other than trying to read the Bible on my own and just starting out in Genesis chapter 1 and getting discouraged. Yep. <laughs> and giving up. Um, so by the time I was in high school, I was more concerned than ever about anything superficial, just all the things that are born from being insecure. So when I went to college, I reconnected with a friend I had known since junior high school. Her name was Teresa Kissner. Um, I spoke with her this morning when I found out I was going to share. <laughs> um, the word that uh, the word was in high school that she and her boyfriend Greg Jackson had gotten religious in college, and I was so curious about that because she and Greg seemed to have it all when they were in high school. When we first met up, I couldn't believe how much love and sincerity she and Greg both had, and I really expected her to look down on me because that's what I thought spiritual people did back then. Um, I immediately knew that God had given me the desire of my heart, somebody who could help me find a true relationship with him. And just like the scripture in Acts 17, he determined the exact place where I should live so that I would seek him and reach out for him. Amen. Teresa says that I was a Berean, and I do believe at that time I just soaked up the word of God, but I truly needed someone in my life who I felt I could trust and who shared the gospel with me. Her, I'm forever grateful. Before long, I was like the Ethiopian eunuch saying, look, here's water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? <laughs> so amen. That was about 42 years ago. Actually, 42 years ago as of last week. blessed to have a family, and there's no greater blessing than having children 
and then seeing them make the decision to follow Jesus. I had dreamed for our kids to be in a campus ministry that was as awesome as ours was back in the day. And so I know that God enabled us to move back to Kansas just in time for Brad and his brothers to go to college here and be in another awesome campus ministry. I know it's hard for some of you to believe, but the early days of amazing campus ministry go all the way back to the 70s. <laughs> another huge blessing is friendships in the kingdom. We've been transferred a lot with my husband's job, and along the way my life has been blessed with friends who are true disciples and continue to love me. Going to a conference is like a family reunion for me. I want to close with two short verses, the first of which I feel defines my conversion, and that's Titus 3, verse 4, which says, But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. And then Romans 2, verse 4 says that God's kindness leads us to repentance. Amen. So every day, and right now more and more, I'm aware of God's kindness to me, and I feel humbled to feel so blessed each and every day. Thank you. Okay, we're going to open it up for another round of sharing. And Lindsay is going to start us off. Come on, Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. Okay, um, I just wanted to lift up Gloria. Um, the past few weeks she's had myself and Megan and Sigri over to their home. And it has been so encouraging, just honestly, I didn't know you, Gloria, about that well, um, but as you were, like, sharing your life and your story and how she became a disciple, like, in L.A., and just learning from, like, your experience, and I had no idea the sacrifice just that you had to make in putting God above your family and, like, how hard that was, and, and the sacrifice that you made in coming all the way out to Kansas from L.A. just to help the singles ministry here, like, I didn't know any of those things, but I think now thinking of like that example of faith is so inspiring to me and like yeah. the fact that people have been faithful for decades is like i can't even comprehend that but i think it's so cool and such an example to learn from and your wisdom and i just appreciate the example too that you guys work you have two energetic boys and like <laughs> bring this over to your home and like it's it's like 8 30 9 o'clock and we're just talking and she's sharing her life with us and we're looking at scriptures and i think that sets an amazing example to me that no matter what stage of life I'm in, like I can still put the kingdom first. Um, so I'm so grateful for your wisdom and I look forward to getting to know you more. And I just thank you for sharing your life with us because it really is an inspiration. so far ever since you came last year. Um, we've had so many baptisms in our campus and just you firing up everybody and all your creative uh, events that we have for Devo. It's a lot of fun. Um, I love you so much. Um, I think, yeah, that's all I can say. <laughs> semester out uh, as women just feeling very defeated and discouraged and uh, we had a couple people walk away from God and we just we were not prepared for the battle that Satan brought us um, and our brothers were so awesome they were bringing candy bars and ice cream and cards and dates I was like wow dates <laughs> Talking with the sisters, we have all been so encouraged by your grace's hearts, uh, not just to love us from a distance, but to show us that you guys love us, to really put it into action. And uh, we do love candy. So <laughs> 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 you can keep doing that, even though we are very encouraged. Um, but also, I, I wanted to lift up Gloria again. Um, I know that you have made such a great effort to get to know the campus girls more. Um, and the more I talk with the sisters, the more they're like, I didn't know she was that amazing. And I was like, I know. And she's been that way for like ever. But I know you've been such an encouragement to the girls and I really appreciate 
uh, you just getting in there, we, we need older women to really Amen. help us yes. to grow. And so uh, I've just been able to see the way that you've impacted those sisters. And um, I really, I really appreciate that and love you for it and a lot of other things. So, uh, but yeah, that's it. <laughs> Um, so one of the people that I wanted to share about is unfortunately not here tonight, um, but I don't know how many of you guys know Denise Ballard very well. Um, I feel like she's one of those um, just kind of pillars of the church that is uh, steadfast and often in the background, but that doesn't mean that she's not serving uh, just as much as all the people in the foreground. Um, I think that uh, one of the things I really uh, appreciate and admire about her is how steadfast she has been through um, years and years and years. Uh, her husband is currently not a disciple, and I think that it's just been amazing to see um, how much she loves him and how much she uh, continues to try to do um, to love him uh, as any other disciple married to another disciple would do so. Um, and I think that it's also been really uh, just impactful to me to see how much she has uh, been able to pass on to her daughter-in-law. Um, I don't know if you guys talk to Christina Ballard very often, but um, as somebody who's about to get married, I cannot believe how much wisdom she has in that area already, um, just how much she's gone after uh, reading book after book, and I think that so much of it has been um, really spawned, spawned, spurred, spurred, uh, whatever the word is, uh, spurred on by Denise and her really calling her higher and challenging her, and um, I know that it's meant a ton to me that I often feel like I'm kind of a misfit, and so it's <laughs> nice when I meet other people that sort of feel the same way and pull me in. Um, so I've really admired that and appreciated that so much about Denise. Um, don't stand up yet, okay? Um, <laughs> I know somebody's going to at some point tonight, but I also wanted to share about Katie. Um, I feel like um, people kind of default you as being in the foreground since you're married to Willie, but I don't really feel like that's who you are. I feel like you are one of those um, quiet in the background servants that it, um, has just given so much to this church and so yes. much to so many of us. Um, yes. I just think about for me personally how much you have borne with me and how much you've loved me through some really challenging times. Um, I also just really appreciate how you love your girls. Yes. Um, yes. I think that uh, we were sharing a little bit the other night about um, well, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this or not, but we were talking about you guys the other night. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I think that one of the things that really comes to mind for me is um, just the wife that you are to Lily. And I think that it's something that I don't think there's a woman in here that doesn't admire about you. And if they don't, then they just don't know you. <laughs> um, but I also, I just love how you love your girls. I love how you discipline them. I love how you... Uh, delight in them. I love how you just enjoy the experience of them. Um, and I think that it just, it sets such an amazing example for so many of us. Um, and I know, I don't know, just looking around the room, everybody's nodding their heads. And <laughs> you're looking at me, so you can't see that. But um, everybody believes that about you. And I just yes. really appreciate it. So, yeah. I love you. time to share about Ken and Esther Long. Um, you guys, to me, are another set of spiritual parents, and you touch each and every single one of us in so many ways. You made an impact on this church and myself. Um, one thing in particular I really appreciate is just how um, you, you ask me how I'm doing, and you really want to know, and you really just take such a strong interest in me and my life, and that's what you've done. Uh, I felt it was just invested in me throughout the years that I've known you guys both. And it's just been um, just awesome just being able to be, uh, just, 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 just to know you guys and just the impact you've had in my life. And it's just been great. Um, you guys just having me and my wife over, um, just kind of pushing us and encouraging us just to, you know, to give and to serve and um, all the nuggets of advice in my life that you guys have given me is just compounded and compounded. And I remember everything that you guys have uh, taught me. And so yeah. I really do appreciate that about you guys and love you guys. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> hey guys, so uh, I got like three different groups.
groups. I want to like <laughs> shout out. So I'm gonna make each one quick. Uh, number one, uh, ICMC. I want to give a shout out to O Dallas, Deanna, and Perry. Uh, I remember I was like walking downstairs from my room and we went outside and like uh, they were just like, hey, you want to come on a walk with us? And I was like, kind of like the first time I like knew people like in the ministry and like know, knew them like outside of their names. So like that was really cool. So I think you guys from you know, like hanging out with me that night. Uh, number two, I want to give a shout out to Katie, Will, and Brett. Uh, and ICMC, Brett and I, we had lunch on the, uh, on the little hill. And we just had a deep, like, little talk, you know, getting to know each other. And, like, I thought that was, like, really cool, too. He took his time out of his day. He was very busy. And he wanted to get to know me and just make sure I was comfortable. And for you guys, when I met you, like, I didn't even know, like, who you were at first. But you, like, pulled me aside. You are like, Trey, what's going on, man? I said, like, we were, like, best friends. And you knew each other already. So, no, that was really cool. Same to uh, Katie. When I first met her, it was like, hey, Trey, you know, how you doing? Like, I didn't even know who she was. Anyway, so I, I just thought, <laughs> I just thought that was like really cool. And then like uh, the last group I want to shout out is uh, my Bible study group before I was baptized, which is uh, Wes, Perry, and Tony. Um, they really like helped me out and they figured out like the man I am and the help I needed from God. And because at first I thought I was cool. I thought I was a Christian. I'm good. I'm set. And then after like Bible studies, it was like, wow, I'm really, I'm really not a Christian. So uh, one verse I want to share is uh, Proverbs 12. 15, it says, the way of a fool seems right to him, but a wise man listens to advice. Amen. And uh, at first, like, I was a fool. Like, I really thought I was good. I was set. And um, they took the time out of their busy schedule, you know, to make sure I was good. And uh, they're just, like, really supporting, like, real brothers. And uh, I love you guys, and I can't even thank you guys enough. Like, I'm talking to Terrell because I love y'all a lot. So, so <laughs> thank you <laughs>
and like times where you're like, Lord, let's go jump off a 50 foot cliff into a lake, and Miss Kimmy over here taking the taking the L for the team. She's like, mm, let's not. I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> I, mean, I guess we shouldn't. <laughs> but it's like super encouraging that I have like another like set of parents who care about me so much, and like. Basically, all the adults here, like who already know me, are practically my parents. So I have a lot of parents. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of explaining to do, but it's like it's super comforting to like know that I always have like someone who I can turn to. Like it doesn't really matter who at this point. It's like the same comfort level for everyone because you're all my family. <laughs> Hi, I just want to take some time and try to encourage all of the students right here. I know like midterms, you know, they're hitting hard, tests, exams, and essays and everything. And I was taking an extra quiet time at like three after my studies last night, and I just came across this, I had to share. Um, it's Psalms 31, verse 23 and 24, where it says, Be strong and let your heart take courage, because the Lord preserves the faithful. And I just want to thank you guys because I see your messages constantly in the group. Me of like, oh, Pat Fed, and it's like, man, it's nine o'clock, and you guys are going out there studying all night and everything. And that's really encouraged me to you know keep up with my studies and work really hard and do all that. So thank you.
and then um, the one who the one who um, but I don't know, you know those like type of people that like um, you're in their presence and it's like you just they just like radiate love. It's just like you love and like they're down to earth and you know, you can talk to them and you just feel good. That's literally the one. He just he just so loved me. Dab him up and it's like all right, I'm gonna have uh, Jake Wassinger come up. He's gonna share his why to close us out tonight. Amen. Okay. I want you to touch my heart, Jake. <laughs> All right, my name is Jake Wassinger, well, and hey. I have uh, been a Christian yeah. for eight years. Amen. I got reached out to uh, at the University of Kansas at the Union here. And, you know, pretty interesting story. I was just studying. I just transferred from uh, Fort A. State University. I was just studying the Union. And uh, a brother, Justin Riley, had uh, walked up and reached out to me. And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, join your Bible talk. And then right after that, another brother, Tim Greer, uh, came up to me and reached out. Kind of looked around, and I was like, you know, no one else around me who's studying is, is going to this, and I really am seeking God, so I think I'll go. I think I'll go. So I, you know, uh, went to the Bible talk, and Eric Ford afterwards approached me and asked me if I wanted to study the Bible, and I said no. <laughs> and uh, the next week, I came, and there's like this little computer lab uh, that I was studying in, and I kind of peek out to see if, you know, the Bible talk was meeting, and... Uh, I peeked a little too late, and they had uh, they were already praying, and I thought, oh, I missed I missed the Bible talk, and of course they were praying because you know they had reached out to people and no one had came, and <laughs> so the next week I came there with my huge study Bible, I'm like I'm ready to go, and you know the rest is history. Uh, studied with Tim Greer and Eric Ford, and. You know, at that point in my life, I was just so lost and seeking something, you know, so much more than what I had. Uh, it just, everything clicked, and um, it was just, it was just amazing uh, to say the Bible and, and become a Christian. But, you know, just to share about preceding um, that time, you know, I was really running from uh, my hometown and the, just the life I was living uh, preceding becoming a Christian. You know, I was involved in... Um, drugs, drinking, the wrong crowds, and by the time I was 21, uh, I had gotten two DUIs, and there was other stuff that, you know, surrounded that as well, but, you know, just to kind of illustrate, uh, when I first became a Christian after I got baptized, when a Christian or, you know, whoever would ride with me, I would have to have an ignition lock in my vehicle. So basically, I'd have to breathe into a breathalyzer just to show that I had not drank uh, before driving the vehicle. And you know, being in trouble and um, all those different things that surround the empty life that you know drinking brings, um, it really hurt my self perception of me, and it really hurt the relationships that I had with others. And I bring up this example of my past to, to draw out, you know, my why. And there's two things that, um, you know, I want to share about that. You know, just being in, you know, a dark place, I'm away from God, broken relationships with my parents, my two younger brothers, my friends, just having shallow relationships. You know, that, like I said, really took a toll on my, my self-perception, how I perceived myself. When I studied the Bible, I realized, I, I don't know if I realized this initially, but it definitely had, had appealed to me that, you know, God was more accepting of my past than I was accepting of my past. God accepted me before um, I even accepted myself and who I was. And for him to, you know, allow me to come into his kingdom, to be... His son really meant a lot to me. You know, people, um, the people who reached out to me, Eric and Tim, that, that was God working through them. Mm -hmm. And I just appreciate um, 
that I can find uh, peace and really find <coughs> self-worth um, and, who, and who God uh, draws me out to be. And, and the second is, is the restored relationships, you know. Um, now, like I said, now I've been a Christian for eight years. Uh, I'm a dad. I'm a husband. And I think that, you know, I never, uh, I never could have been the person that I am today without, um, with, without God really working through me and allowing me to be um, the best person that I can be with him. So, you know, I do want to share a scripture um, along, along these lines here. And that is in uh, 2 Corinthians 5.20. It says, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though we were making, as though God were making his appeal through us. Uh, we implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. And, you know, I'm so grateful um, that I was reached out to, that someone, uh, you know, even though they didn't know that at that time, that I was hurting and that I was empty. And I'm thankful for the time that I got to and still get to share the word of God to others, especially on campus, like I was reached out to, but, um, you know, now as well. And just the um, relationships and friendships that I have in the church, but most importantly, uh, the relationship that I have with God that restores my relationship with myself and others. Amen. <laughs> you guys being here. I love doing this because you feel refreshed, and we also feel a little closer to one another. Hearing people share about other people, I feel like I, I know everybody on a deeper level. But I uh, really want to encourage you. Obviously, not anyone got to share. If you had someone on your mind that you wanted to encourage, do that afterwards. Amen? Uh, let's really continue to encourage one another daily. Guys, we need that. We need that. Amen? Um, and continue to think about what's your why. So let's go ahead and go to God in prayer. We'll close out the break and go get your kids. God, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for the family that we have here, God. Thank you for unity within your family. God, it's just such an incredible group of brothers and sisters here. I pray that we can really continue to dig into each other's lives, consider how we can spur one another on toward love and good deeds, uh, see to it that none of us have sinful, unbelieving hearts that turn away from God. And just really to encourage one another daily, God. Thank you for the refreshment that we feel from being a part of your family. And God, be with us the rest of our weeks. We love you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Get a break on three. One, two, three. <laughs>